whole lamb barbecue. So how do you spit roast this 40 pound lamb? Hey there, it's Bill West with barbecuetricks.com. And this is a great holiday barbecue feast. Some of the most popular videos that we have here are whole animal roasts. We got a whole cow, a whole hog, but with lamb, typically it's been smaller Easter stuff with small chops or a rack of lamb. So thanks to my friends, Pete Stamatis and Nick Hatzis, they walk us through this whole prep process. Uh, take a look at this. It was for a big Greek Orthodox Easter celebration family feast. Now what's the main, uh, what's the main spice on this barbecue sauce? Main spice? Main spice is oregano. It's not barbecue sauce, is it? Not barbecue sauce. No, this is not unlike the traditional American style barbecues that we do here in the United States. Uh, the Greek style barbecue is, uh, <clears throat> the key component is oregano, olive oil, lemon, and occasionally meat, uh, excuse me, mint. Uh, make up the key components to the dressing or the marinade, as, you, as you'd say. We're in the uh, kitchen of the uh, Koskinas family. They're gonna help us get the lamb oh, on the steak. Dino, yeah, so tell us what you're doing here, buddy. Our first thing is we're gonna stick the pole through the back end. Yeah. The poor lamb never thought life was gonna be this way. <laughs> and we gotta line these two up with the legs, but before we do that, we're gonna have to stick it through the throat here. There's a little slot. If you stick your finger, anybody can do it. You, you'll see it. And what we wanna do is try and go through the head yeah. with this, so we crack it. So, and so that that one there looks like it's the, the, the it, top of the head's been pre-cracked, right, Dino? Pre-cracked, or you know, when they butchered it. Maybe they just, sometimes they hit the end of it. It's a sharp knife. Watch your fingers, man. That's against you right there, fellas. Oh, Go. now it's coming. Go Do ahead, it. Stan. Do it, Stan. Okay. Uh, okay, now, yeah, now we're gonna flip her over, try and even her out so we can get the back legs. Right in the right in the meat there, right okay. right in the leg. Approximately how are you gonna how much are you gonna pay for this lamb? You gotta figure out where to get it first. A butcher can help you. There's a bunch of places online. Online probably kind of expensive. A 50 pound lamb they said would run about uh, 275 bucks plus about a 75 dollar processing fee. So 350 bucks for uh, a lamb like this. You're gonna need a spit to cook on. Spit Jack is the king of these things. I'll put a link to their model CX855, which can handle uh, up to a 55 pound lamb or even a hog. Uh, it's a nice one. And otherwise you can rent a spit from some rental companies. But a hog would take a lot longer because you're cooking the hog to a hotter internal temperature so you can pull it apart. Um, but with this, expect about a four to five hour cooking time. It all depends on the wind, the weather, and this spit here that we're using as a closed in back so it'll cook a little bit hotter than one that would is totally open, maybe like this one here. Okay, so now the, the, the bracket is in, and now you need the, the screws. There should also be a bracket piece, right? Mm-hmm. Where's that bracket? Screw that one. Just get on the okay, we're good. We want to make sure this this hook that this hook is here is lining up with the pole. <coughs> Uh, this is this is bracket number two. Bracket, bracket number, number two. two. It's a little bit trickier in the. In the... Okay. Okay. How's the other one? It's coming. It's coming. Okay. And I got you. And I got you. Yeah, we're gonna stick our hands. This is like he's from there. Colorado, grass fed. Those are the best. They say. The best. Certified organic. How big is it? How big is it? It's a 40 pounder. That's a big one. It's a big one, but it's a baby. You it's know, a you can tell a lamb's a baby, not by the size. You could have a little bit, a lamb that's this small and be only 30 pounds, but by the teeth. Oh, uh, the teeth are a baby. And the it, it, I, I bought a lamb one time, it was 80 pounds. It was a baby? It, it was a baby. <coughs> you could really? tell by the teeth. Baby human. But, you, I, I, but one time, a long time ago, my cousin in Greece, he has one thousand. Sure he has one thousand five hundred goats and three hundred lambs in Greece, oh, you just and he killed a little it. lamb, a small one. It was only thirty-two pounds. And I says, "How much to cut the legs?" He goes, "In a provatina." 
It's old. He goes, look at the teeth, and the teeth were huge. Mm -hmm. uh, so the small teeth means... The small teeth, sm it's small because the, the larger the teeth, that means it grows by the years. Mm -hmm. All right, so small right. teeth. Small teeth means baby lamb. Yeah. Uh -huh. One thing to watch out for is when you secure the lamb on the spit, you're going to want to get it really secure so there is no wobble at all. Uh, you can use the twine or some rope, but make sure you're using cotton twine or cotton rope, not the plastic stuff that could melt. And then when you mount it up there, start with the lamb on the highest setting and lower it occasionally through the cook until the last 30 minutes where you lower it all the way to the bottom to crisp the skin it's not up going nice. it's not going it's not going That's the important thing. So this is the spit where the lamb is going to be made. We got the coals going. The coals are going a little slower than we like. So this is an ancient Greek technique to get your holes going. Go ahead. It's called the Bishop Likey. The Bishop Likey effect. What kind of coals do we have? Let's get the coals here. This is the Royal Oak Allwood Charcoal Charcoal. We've got the basic dressing or the basic dry rub for the uh, for the lamb that we use to coat the inside of the animal before we put it on the spit, which consists of your basic ingredients, basic uh, spices, salt, pepper, uh, <clears throat> garlic powder, oregano, dried mint, and we tend to like a little bit of uh, lemon zest and uh, orange zest in our, in our dry rub. And what we'll do is we'll utilize half of this on the animal dried and then we'll save half of this for the olive oil dressing that we'll use to baste the animal. What you want to do is you want to hand mix this. This is another Nick. Yes, everybody gotta, everybody working gotta, on the lamb is named Nick. You gotta get this puppy ready and tied up. What are you doing, are you doing there, guys? We are dressing the animal. We are putting the dry spice rubs in there. Along with what? Along with a stick of uh, Lando Lakes made in Chicago butter. Okay, so the spices have gone in. They're inside the oh, animal, there it is. And now we're closing it up using the, uh, Nick here is actually a doctor. Nick, what is the suture technique we're using? <laughs> This is called the single-handed malakia technique. <laughs> the single-handed technique. Okay, and we sew up the entire belly of the beast. So after a few hours of basting, you check the meat and you want it cooked to your liking. You probably shoot for an internal temperature in the thickest part of the thigh, about 150 degrees Fahrenheit to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. The joints are gonna be loosened dramatically and you can feel it in there just by wiggling a leg. It's different, again, from a hog where you want to cook it up to 190 degrees. Once it's done, remove it off the spit, put it on a resting area for carving, and uh, let it rest before you cut into it for at least 10 or 15 minutes. So yeah, if you like this whole lamb uh, barbecue, you might want to check out the whole hog video we have or the whole cow video elsewhere on this channel, and uh, you want to get the recipe for the seasoning here that they used I will put it on the website. That is www.barbecuetricks.com.